Alaska Garden. I'm with UAF Cooperative Extension Service and Tanana Chiefs Conference. I'm here in Homer, Alaska, checking out all the cool things farmers are doing here to extend the season, like high tunnels, hoop houses, low tunnels, and also the other cool tools they're using as small-scale farmers. I'm here at Synergy Gardens with Lori Jenkins, and she's got a bunch of high tunnels here. These are Oregon Valley high tunnels. Yes, they are. Um, and she's got a really nice, innovative um, rain catchment system here. So Lori, can you tell us a little bit about this rain catchment system? Well, even though we thought our tunnels would be on a nice flat slope, there is a little bit of a gradient. And we know there's no water gets inside our tunnels. We wanted to maximize um, the natural rain that we get in, here in Alaska. So we installed some gutters and we have it attached and a tank inside for a reservoir to catch all the rain. And you would be amazed how much rain this roof surface captures. You know, we have a house with rain catchment and 550 gallon tanks. We have a shop with rain catchment and a 1,500 gallon tank. But this roof surface is the largest roof surface on the farm. And so we installed the gutters and we catch the rain. And then I put in a pump and irrigate all the crops inside. That's and great. it's um, low tech and these are reusable. We take them down every winter because of the weight of a snow load. And we store them inside the tunnel, actually. And we wait for you know that um, marginal April weather where we don't think a heavy snow dump is going to fall. And we'll reinstall it because we're down here in Homer. And we will get rains in April and rains um, even in March. Mm -hmm. And where my irrigation ponds are still uh, rock solid ice. So this is gonna give me the earliest water source that I can get That's and the least expensive. Great. And you have a slight slope here, it's about two degrees? Two to four, uh, give or take. Mm -hmm. So that helps funnel the water down into the tank too. Mm -hmm. and that's why we have the tank on the south side of the tunnels. It's just the way the slope falls. Okay. And then in August, when the rains start coming heavy, we will take this um, um, C bracket out and run it into a bucket. And we hooked, we outfitted the bucket to work on a water hose. So I'll catch this and I'll drain it to an irrigation pond or wherever I need that water to go so, because my tank is full and there's excess. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go see the tank inside. Awesome. So this is, this is your tank that you catch the water in. Mm -hmm. Our reservoir. And mm -hmm. it looks like you built it from some sturdy wood here. And Well, we wanted to take up as least tunnel space as possible. And so the gutter flows in. We have it coming in. We actually created some filters for it because there's um, a lot of stuff that comes down off sure. the roof. And um, so the rain comes in, we have it filtered, and it fills this reservoir. Okay. And to use it as irrigation, we have one of these submersible pumps, which you hook your water hose to. And, um, you know, I just lay it in. That looks pretty simple. Oh, it is. And I make sure, you know, it's one of those pumps without an on-off switch. So the only way it goes on is you plug it into a power source. Okay. And then I have it hooked up to my overhead hoses, which these are my favorite. And then I can just water overhead, or I can connect this water to um, my drip system with this. Just use that same outflow into this and I can turn on a drip zone. Nice. And, um, it, but you know, it starts with good water. Mm -hmm. And so you take up a little less space with this design of a tank mm -hmm. in your greenhouse. We thought this would be very cost effective. So we, you know, being do-it-yourselfers and we found a, a good water quality liner and we built this real sturdy and we tried to level it up as good as possible and it's worked for several years and it holds a good 700 plus gallons of water, nice. which is a, a lot of water. It takes about 300 gallons maybe to water a zone at a time. Oh, okay. And so I can fill it, do a zone, do another zone, and, um, and I feel good about it. Good.
Mm -hmm. And your overhead hose there, it just slides right along those cables up there. Yes, it's awesome. Um, you know, I'll hook it up with a wand, um, you know, a nice gentle spray, and it just slides, and I get to do a whole zone like that. And, um, and it's easy and out of the way. I'm not what I call hose wrestling all over the, the ground and knocking plants over. Yeah, that looks great. And it's convenient and it's easy to drain. And um, it's one of the best investments we made. Water is critical, especially in these tunnels where no rain gets in. Mm -hmm. But again, I have the largest roof surface anywhere to catch all the rainwater. Well, great. Well, it sounds like you have a really efficient and smart watering system for your tunnels. We did a little research, thought about it. Um, you know, if I were to do it again, I might purchase a tank instead of building my own. Mm -hmm. But this was a great project. It was good research. I got more water than if I purchased a 300 gallon tank. And what I was looking for was something 600 to 800 gallons. Uh -huh. And so this, this size didn't block too much south facing light. This was the solution we came up with. Great. Well, thanks for sharing your, your watering system for your high tunnel. Oh, thank you, Heidi, for your interest. <laughs> yeah.